Welcome to video 13 in series 3 and in this video I'll show you how to use triggers and I'll show you how to use three unity functions that relate to triggers. First of all making a trigger is super simple so you just make uh, anything well it just has to have a collider so for example I'm going to make a cube here I'll just reset the position okay it's right there I'll just push it up just as an example really and what you need to do is on the collider you just need to check is trigger now there's a rule with using triggers one of the game objects that interacts with the trigger either the trigger or the object going into the trigger must have a rigid body so for example the player does have a rigid body on it so when it touches the trigger it will then cause a bunch of functions to be called. That is, if your script has them in there. They're just called like that. It's inbuilt programming by Unity. And so let's go ahead and make use of it. Now, you don't have to have a mesh renderer, of course. Uh, most triggers in games would be invisible. But for this case, I'll just leave it on just so that uh, I can see, well, where it is and let's show you that it's working. Okay, so coming back here, I'll just create a new C Sharp script and I'll call it trigger example and open it up okay and as usual let me do my thing which is to convert right and then once again so you'll see this over and over and over namespace chapter one don't actually have to do that since it's just an example just just making you and I both get into the habit of it that's all all right so uh, for this example I'm just gonna get rid of these and say this is how you write it this is a unity method void on trigger enter and then you have to say collider with a capital C and then you can call it anything other so when a collider comes and touches the trigger game object any script on that game object which has this function here it will get called and then all I'll say is debug.log and I'll say other dot name all right easy now I'll make another one here that's another unity function called void on trigger exit and how about I say how about I make it a little bit more interesting and say plus uh, has exited. Okay. And let me put up here plus has entered. Okay. All right. Now let me go and attach that to the trigger. Uh, and why don't I just rename that so I know what it is. And I'll just call it uh, my trigger and uh, drop in the trigger example script. And I think I should be good to go. I'll hit play. All right, and then I'll just walk into it. There we go. FPS controller has entered. That is the name of the player. All right, how about I exit? There we go. FPS controller has exited. Ah, so that worked. All right, now there's a, the last function, which is void on trigger stay. I'll just copy this. And void on trigger stay. And... And I'll write in here is in the trigger. Okay. Let me try this out. Let me clear. Increase that a little bit. Hit play. All right. Entered. And there you go. FPS controller is in the trigger. Boy, it gets called a lot. You can see that it's already reached 400 calls. Then I exit and it stops. It says FPS controller has exited so that was simply how the trigger works what you saw is any game object that is set to is trigger will then call those functions if on any script that is attached to that game object so any script attached to the game object that has these functions they will be called the collider of what was touched will be passed in and then you can do stuff with that all right and uh, as you as i explained one of the game objects must have a rigid body now there are some important things you should understand about uh triggers they should be small so don't make it really big and encompassing a big area otherwise uh, all the game objects in that area 
they'll all be touching the trigger. If they have rigid bodies, so if they have rigid bodies, they'll all be uh, calling these functions and you'll have a slow game if you have lots of triggers like that. So triggers should be small. So think of something like, you know, uh, entering into a place and then an event happens like enemies spawn or the lights turn on or off or an elevator or something like that is uh, used by walking into a space. That's what a trigger is for. So don't make it a big thing, touching lots of game objects. I'll show you another thing, the overlap sphere, which you can use for that and only call it at intervals. So that's very efficient. And you can use that for a uh, polling, well, seeing what is within range and stuff like that. But that's another topic and we'll get to that later. Okay, so I thought I should just uh, mention that. All right, anyway, that's enough for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you some more interesting stuff. I'll show you uh, basically like this wall here at the moment. I have to do, click on it to change its layer. Well, I'll just show you a really simple uh, scripting bit where this trigger will access uh, the script on the wall and then uh, change the layer uh, per that. Okay. All right, so see you in the next video and thanks for watching.